Today in the History and Context of Journalism series, we're looking at J.S. Mill and liberalism, a massive topic with huge impact on the contemporary world. And I have in the studio with me Brian Thornton, who gave the lecture earlier today, and Charlotte and Andrew, who are students on the course. Uh, Brian, what would you say, uh, assess for us, the importance of John Stuart Mill? Um, well, John Stuart Mill was an exceptional individual, a, a singular individual. He was um, a leading intellectual in the 19th century. Um, he is best remembered for his theories on liberty and utilitarianism. Um, he um, received the ideas of uh, utilitarianism from um, Bentham, Jeremy Bentham, who was his mentor, along with his father. Um, they put John Stewart through an incredible and intense education when he was uh, when he was young, so so much so that by the age of three he was uh, reading Greek. He learned English through Greek. Um, by nine he was fluent in Latin, and by sixteen he was one of the best educated people in the Western world. Um, unfortunately, by twenty he had a breakdown, um, and it was, a, according to him, poetry. Which eventually dragged him from this um, from this breakdown and and um, uh, enabled him to resurrect his career. Um, it was this idea of incorporating uh, poetry and the arts which enabled J uh, John Stuart Mill to sort of humanize the utilitarian ideas that um, Bentham had uh, espoused. He he believed that uh, things were much, much more complicated than the very sort of practical and um, brutal um, regime that um, Bentham had suggested. Um, when uh, on liberty, his uh, his landmark uh, book, he outlined his ideas on the extent to individual freedom. He believed that people in their uh, private dealings should be free. They should be free to do and to say whatever they wanted as long as nobody was harmed. Um, he thought that the state and the government should only interfere if, uh, in order to protect other people. Um, so that even now when we read uh, John Stuart Mill's On Liberty, it seems um, quite controversial and quite startling to believe that somebody somebody in the 19th century was suggesting this as a method, uh, um, as a way that society should exist. He was al also an advocate of um, universal suffrage. He believed that uh, women should uh, uh, be allowed to vote. Um, he thought that it was uh, ridiculous to try and keep women out of the political process. Um, so that e even in, even in recent times, even in the last couple of years, Gordon Brown has given a speech on John Stuart Mill, and uh, David Miliband, the Foreign Secretary, has uh, referred to the the uh, utilitarian principles, saying that the principles of, uh, of utilitarianism are s still alive. Um, so these ideas of John Stuart Mill are still very powerful, very potent, and very influential. Now, this insistence on the part of Mill on the absolute right and the absolute good of complete freedom of speech um, seems to me to be at the core of it. But it brings us up against a, a contemporary problem, doesn't it, which is that there are people who say that there are things that cannot be said that should not be said. Uh, one example would be the, those Muslims, it's a minority of them, who object strongly to any criticism of Islam one thinks of those Danish cartoons a couple of years ago. What would John Stuart Mill say to people like that, that there are things you can't say because I find it too upsetting or it's going to cause a riot or something like that? Well, uh, John Stuart Mill did uh, talk about this extensively. He believed that the freedom of speech was an absolute, that as long as you didn't harm anybody, um, you were allowed to say what, whatever you liked. And when he, said, he spoke about harm, he wasn't talking about offence because he believed that offence, as in taste, as in opinion, was down to the individual. There was no universal agreement about taste, about something that was shocking to one person, may not be shocking to another. So that he said that um, it was only if you were inciting people to, uh, to commit uh, a violent act against another individual, that's when the state could step in. He was... 
you have to remember that Mill was writing at a time when um, the church and religion were still very, very powerful. So that although he was a uh, uh, secular, he even he was a little bit hesitant to use examples um, f uh, of Christian examples to sort of explain his theories of liberty and utilitarianism. So in his book on liberty, he he describes the situation in Muslim countries where um, uh, pork is forbidden. Um, and he says that even when a country is 100% um, in agreement about um, a, a, a sort of a cultural uh, rule such as such as not eating, eating pork, it sh somebody who does eat pork should not be in any way be penalized by the state. His idea was that even if 99% of people believed one thing, the 1% should not be silenced. He gave explicit reasons for this. One was because even though we might be very sure or almost certain that something is true, we may not be absolutely convinced. So that that one percent which seems ridiculous now, that opinion that seems ridiculous now, in 10 years, in 20 years, in 100 years, may be um, what everybody believes to be true so that things, the majority, even the fact that people, um, that most people believe an idea doesn't necessarily make it true. John Stuart Mill was very worried and suspicious of majority opinion. He encouraged a sort of a plurality of, of living, uh, a sort of, um, he encouraged people to have a, an individual, individual opinions and individual style of, of, of living so that even even with controversial ideas, John Stuart Mill would be very much in defence of those, even if he dis disagreed with them. Um, one of the, uh, if I can go on, he, 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 even one of the examples that he gave, he was, um, he was, he's against, he was, he's, he's in favour of uh, of uh, women enjoying uh, freedoms and rights, but using utilitarian principles and using um, the principles of liberty that he believed in. He, he thought that it was acceptable for a man to have more than one wife if the wives were in agreement, if they did it uh, out of free will. So that even ideas that he disagreed with, he defended the person's right to uh, voice those opinions. So for example, to, to stay with the Muslim thing for a bit because it's in the news so much, if a Muslim woman in Britain wanted to wear a full burqa and walk about doing that, that would be fine in John Stuart Mill's system just as much as their right to object to um, uh, the cartoons, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. He would uh, he would defend that woman's right to wear whatever she liked. Um, the issue of the cartoons is, is more difficult because there was a potential for incitement um, yes. to violence in, in, in that instance. But no, I mean, John Stuart Mill was very much, was, uh, was absolute on this, that people should be able to, to voice their opinion um, whether the, it is controversial, whether we find it distasteful yeah. or not. Well, I think a lot of John Stuart Mill uh, is widely accepted today, at least in Britain and America, as sort of common sense that there should be rights for women, that there should be social equality, that there should be freedom of speech. There are problems and difficulties with all of these things, but he's pretty central in a way. But, but what about this underlying um, system of utilitarianism? The idea that there were laws of, of, of human behaviour and u human happiness. I think that's less well accepted. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, utilitarianism... We explore utilitarianism a bit more. Absolutely. Utilitarianism is um, a very um, persuasive um, uh, argument when, when, you, when you hear it first. The idea of utilitarianism, um, sort of explained very simply, is that you want to maximise happiness and minimise pain. Um, that's uh, it's very difficult to argue against this. This seems very very logical. Um, people enjoy happiness. People don't like pain. Um, the idea came from Jeremy Bentham. Um, Bentham was a very practical man. Um, he tr he tried to remove.